Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Reed Duffy Chronicles. I'm Reed Duffy. The dawning of a new Summer Olympics pageant conjures up images of Jim Thorpe, Carl Lewis, swimmer Mark Spitz, and others who scooped up several gold medals while showcasing their dazzling athletic talents. But no athlete penned for Olympic gold more productively than an all-but-forgotten track star from Lafayette and Purdue named Ray Urey. And his remarkable story is worthy, at the very least, of a television movie of the week. The reason Raymond Clarence Urey is not routinely lumped into the pantheon of American Olympic heroes is that the events he so devastatingly dominated at the turn of the century are no longer held. For those who compete in the high jump, long jump, and triple jump insist on getting a running head start. But Urey competed and blew away opponents in the standing high, long, and triple jumps, so much in a class by himself that he won gold medals in all three events in the 1900 Olympics in Paris, in all three events in the 1904 Olympics in St. Louis. With the standing triple jump discontinued, Yuri made do with gold medals of the standing high and long jumps in the provisional 1906 Olympics in Athens and the 1908 Olympics in London. Ten gold medals in four Olympics in the standing jumping events. An incredible record for a lad whose parents wondered whether they'd ever stand at all. Ray Urey was born in 1873 in Lafayette near the Wabash River and very close to what is now the Purdue campus, on land his grandfather developed as one of the city's pioneers. Any thoughts or inklings of being an athlete appeared snuffed out when Urey developed polio sometime after the age of seven. This once dreaded childhood affliction so weakened Urey's legs that he seemed destined for a lifetime in a wheelchair. But then doctors decided to prescribe some sort of leg exercises in hopes that someday he might walk a little bit. Well, Ray Urey took those exercises and ran with them. And he worked real, real hard, believing in himself and believing in the dream that he could do this, and went on to learn how to walk, entering Purdue in 1890. So from a frail, crippled child, Ray Urey had worked himself with extensive leg and jumping exercises to a strapping 6'3", 170-pound athlete with stunning spring in his legs. And ready to show off the fruits of his efforts at Purdue, where he studied engineering, met and married his wife, Nell Johnson, and became its first great athlete. When Ray Urey came to Purdue in the 1890s, he played a little basketball, played a little football before those sports became intercollegiate attractions. Of course, it was in track that he made his great name. Not exactly blessed with the great facilities that Purdue track athletes have today, but achieving marks and records that still astound today. It was not just all the first place medals he received in leading Purdue's first track teams to collegiate dominance, or the 16 gold medals he won in AAU competitions, or the 10 he corralled in the Olympics. It was also the heights and distances he achieved such as the world record in the standing high jump of five feet, five inches. Keep in mind, he just leaped over this thing from a standing start. He would crouch down real low with his arms way back. He would leap up high, bring his left leg over first, and then in kind of a scissors position, then bring his very powerful right leg over and pretty much wipe out his competition. I would give you a full demonstration, but as you can see, I have my good pants on. Yuri's world record in the standing long jump in the 1904 Olympics, 11 feet, four and seven, eight inches, still stands today. It's a very simple process. He just kind of stood at the edge, went down like that, and uh, only went a lot farther, like uh, over here. Now, Yuri's competition practice was to pass on all the heights and distances his opponents were attempting, and when they exhausted all their jumps, Ray would blithely make the one jump at a height or distance his opponents only made in their dreams, then pick up his medals and go home. Yuri graduated from Purdue with both undergraduate and graduate degrees in engineering, ultimately heading to New York to pursue his trade and his athletic career with the New York Athletic Club. Yuri was 27 when he took his leaps and bounds to an international stage of the chaotically organized 1900 Paris Olympics, where he found himself scheduled to compete in all three of his events on the same day in laughably poor track conditions. And on that day, July 16th, he won his first three Olympic gold medals and bettered his world record in the standing high jump prompting French sports writers to label him the human frog. Of his performance in the 1906 Athens Olympics, where Nell Urey helped provide American home cooking for the American athletes, Olympics historian John Kieran wrote, there's little to say of the standing jump events in 1906 except that Ray Urey was there. When Urey was in the standing jumps, the other fellows were merely competing for second place. In the 1908 Olympics in London at age 34, Yuri struggled through back problems to win his last two gold medals. He trained hard for the 1912 Olympics in Stockholm, but his 38-year-old body made it clear it had run out of gold, so he retired from competition, putting his Purdue degrees to productive use and presiding over New York City's massive water projects. He returned frequently to Purdue for football games, even spreading some Olympic soil from Athens for the Purdue gridiron. 
Ray Urey died in New York in October 1937, just shy of his 63rd birthday, and six years after his wife Nell passed away, leaving behind their only child, Mary Elizabeth. Ray Urey's Olympic accomplishments have not exactly gone unnoticed. After all, he is commemorated on a U.S. postage stamp, had his own trading card during his prime. His 10 medals made him worthy of the Guinness Book of World Records, and Ripley could barely believe what he had accomplished. And two years ago, he became the inaugural member of the Purdue Athletic Hall of Fame, with his grandson Tom Carson of Baltimore now trying to take the inspirational story of the amazing Ray Urey to the silver screen. I have uh, been trying to, for the past 14 years, research his life and write a screenplay about it because I'm damn proud of that guy. And I guess uh, with a crack athletic team, even back then, a hundred some years ago, gave him the inspiration and the confidence and, and just the, the metal to carry on. And it gave him a lot of pride too, I'm sure. It gives me a lot of pride. For many years, the 10 gold medals Ray Urey won were on display at the New York Athletic Club. In 1978, all 10 medals were stolen from the New York Athletic Club. His grandson, Tom Carson, has been able to get two of the medals restored by the Olympic Committee with hopes that all 10 will be, as Urey's accomplishment makes this a very expensive endeavor. Next up, we head to the campus of my alma mater, the University of Notre Dame, to mark the 100th anniversary of a very special place to so many people.